uh, in this module i will talk about the web development framework uh, i will talk about what is a web development framework i will talk about what are the two main types of the web development frameworks and i will also briefly uh, look at some of the more popular web development frameworks from the client side and then we'll do a comparison of the web development frameworks now uh, what are web development frameworks web development frameworks have made the life of programmers like me and programmers like you uh, more productive productive in the sense that instead of writing and calculating and writing the code and fixing the code uh, there are many things which are built into this web development frameworks which are done through these web development frameworks so that the programmers can concentrate they can put their time uh, more uh, effectively and utilize their time for more productive work so that is a web development framework so uh, without further ado i'll go into more details uh, what are the web development frameworks web development frameworks uh, uh, it reduce the hassle they uh, they separate us from writing the repetitive code which we have to write and then debug also remember that if i have to uh, place a button also or something very very small that even that also requires a lot of coding or if not a lot of coding it requires coding so because of the web development framework uh, i can do all of those things uh, very effectively uh, and very efficiently around 1995 when uh, these tools were not available then the person or the programmer who has done certain coding was the right person to maintain that code uh, to uh, maybe optimize that code and to fix any issues in that code but thanks to the web development framework uh, we have this uh, facility and we are using it to our advantage so what are the types of web development frameworks uh, let me go over these types so there are two main types of the web development frameworks one is at the client side and one is at the server side and uh, sometimes the server side called as the back end and the client side is called as the front end also but you but you do but you understand so uh, for the server side web development framework it can you can gen uh, generate pages also uh, the business logic goes over there the security aspects goes over there the database connectivity goes over there so that takes care of the back end for the front for the front end web development framework uh, we have things happening inside the browser and we don't have uh, the we, we we don't have the business logic in the front end or the client side web development framework so you see that the, the 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 task which were for the middle tier as we have been discussing the t the, the the three tier problem or the three tier architecture so the middle tier and part of the the database tier they are taken care of by the server side web development framework and for the for the interface for the displays for the user interface it is the front end or the client side of the web development framework and then there is something very interesting which is the meteor so the the the, the, the meteor web development framework it kind of integrates and works with the front end development framework and the back end development framework so that is the strength of that framework so these are some of the top five most popular front end web development frameworks they have their own strengths and they have their own uh, limitations also the most popular one which has been rewritten is the angular and of course there are there are quite a few there are actually there are about 50 or so web development frameworks around in the market including the front end and the back end but i will very very briefly talk about these five and i will look at the pros and cons of these five web development frameworks in the next slide so let's look at the comparison over here of the angular versus the ember also so you can see over here is that it has a very fast development but at the same time it is quite difficult to learn 
and over here for the ember it gives higher performance but it is difficult to learn right but the thing is that once you master them then of course this difficulty is gone and you can do quite good work this is good for single page applications and this is good for debugging fast development so you see there are the pros and there are cons of these development frameworks it has clear documentation that is a strength that will help so now let's look at the other three web development frameworks also we have this react over here it has poor documentation that is a con so in the previous case we see, saw that the documentation was good but over here the it is not very good it has the strength is a wide tool set so that makes it more flexible that makes it more robust in the context of working with different types of applications it is for Vue JS, JS for JavaScript it is small and fast but it is far too flexible so this doesn't go together doesn't go well and for the flutter it is hard to reload but only for mobile applications so these so this strength is mobile applications over here limited support for Apple so this is kind of counterproductive over here because the thing is that you have it is for mobile apps but it is limited support for Apple so you see that these different development frameworks which I have talked about for the client side they have their own strengths their own limitations and it is kind of a tool set so it is up to you as a programmer as a web based application developer to know the pros and cons of all of these web development frameworks and to select the ones which are more suitable for the application to be developed for the problem at hand so that you make the right decision you make the right choice at the right time so that you don't have to revert back or come back and fix the problem so that's all i have to talk about in this module